Let's start playing with pixel math, and I'm going to use one of the functions that we just learned about. In fact, I'm going to use a couple of them. Let's say we have the image here, and this image is a thousand by a thousand, and let's say we wanted to draw a vertical line in the image. That's one part of the cross, and then we would want a horizontal line, perhaps, but I'm going to say a vertical line. So a vertical line is basically when the x-coordinate equals something, because we have varying y-coordinates as we go down, but every time the x-coordinate, let's say we go across here, and let's say the value is 300. So every time x equals 300, let's say we turn it on and we make it a white pixel, otherwise nothing happens. And then we go to y equals 2 or 3 or whatever, and then we go across and every time x equals 300, it lights it up. So we're going to end up with a vertical line if we said you know, x equals the position 300. So I'm going to show you the way that I think looks right, and then I can show you the shortcut of doing this. We're going to use that if statement. We're going to say if the position is equal to, now this is a special equal to, this is the Boolean equal to, which is actually a comparison. It's going to compare the position that it's at to something, which is going to be the value 300. If this is true, then we need to do something. We'll make it 1. If it is not true, we'll make it zero. So this should create a vertical line in the picture. That's using the if statement. Now, if you're a fancy programmer, you understand that we can do the same thing in the following way. I don't actually need this. I'm just going to show this. I'm going to always use the if statement because I think it's more readable. But if I just do this, I should actually get the same result. And the reason is because this statement, what it does is literally true equals the number one in Boolean logic. So I'm saying this thing is only true when the value evaluates here to 300. And so that means that it's going to be, uh, that comparison I should say, is equal to 300. So uh, you get ones put here because that's the only time it's true. That it's the same. It's exactly the same as actually expanding it out into the if statement that I that I specified a moment ago. But I'm going to keep it the if statement because I think it it really makes it very uh, readable. And then if I were to put the other coordinate like this, I say y equals 300, comma one comma zero then I should get a horizontal line running through the image, like that. What if I wanted to have both lines appear on the screen? Now we're getting very close to like a crosshair of some sort. Well, we can do that as well, because basically we wanted to draw any time either of these conditions are true. And either being true is actually an OR statement. So I'm now going to expand my if statement here. I'm going to say x position equals 300 and then I need to put a special symbol there. That's another operator and that one is called OR. There's an operator called, these are the only two you really need to know for Boolean logic. There's AND and OR and then you can consider NOT and other things but you know AND and OR will get you an awful long way here. Um, that's the AND symbol, but it's the OR that I'm going to be using here. Or. So what I'm saying is, if either of these statements are true, if the X thing is 300 or the Y position is 300, then make it a 1. Otherwise, make it a 0. Let's see what happens now. And there we go. We're very, very close. This, of course, is not the center of the frame. This is some, you know, it's in some other position here, but we want it to end up being in the center. So now we need to consider uh, some more capabilities of uh, pixel math. One of its capabilities is that, and I'm going to go ahead and start assigning things now to simplify things a little bit, is that you can create variables to hold information. And we can take advantage of another function here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. What we don't want to do is to specify, you know, numbers because that's not going to be general enough. 
What we really want to do is say something like if the position equals the halfway point is really what we want to say here if we want our plus to go in the middle. So what we would do in that case is we're going to say, let me just, let me just show this to you, width of the target image divided by 2. Now target t I need to explain. Target T is, I could type image 0, 06, but that's, that's so specific. We want this to apply to any image. So the target T means whichever image we point at when we use our little caret here. That's what that means. Whatever image we point at, if the image was this one, it's going to basically type in whatever's written for the name I can't see here. Or if I point at this image, what it writes in for target T is image 0, 06. So I don't have to do the work. I just need to put it uh, by dragging here. As long as I have that target T, it puts whatever that image name is. I don't have to type it out. So I would put that width of whatever image I point at, like that. And, uh, this should be height, of course, not width. Height of target T divided by 2. Now. Let's see what happens if I did this. Will I get a plus in the center? And the answer is yes, I do. Look at that. So now we, are, we basically have rep, uh, reproduced what you see in DBE, where you, know, you click on the active image in DBE and it makes like that crosshairs on the whole image. Yeah, we're, we've done that. But I think we want to be a little more special about this. We want to be special because, number one, this does not work. This expression doesn't always work, depending upon your image. And then, number two, maybe we want to make the crosshairs smaller. We don't need them to be this big. First, let me, um, let me demonstrate the problem here, which is, you remember I opened up another image? See, if I do this expression on this image, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because 1001, because that's how many pixels are here, divided by 2 is 500.5. Well, 500.5 is not a position. We can only have integral number uh, of uh, positions based on these pixels here. Um, there isn't, there is a position, if you will, if you ignore where pixels are, you can consider, uh, you know, in your image where that actually is. But in terms of integral numbers of pixels, then we need to specify a number that doesn't have a fraction. And so this doesn't work because we have a fractional answer here. So to get around this particular problem, we can use uh, yet another function, and we have to choose which one we like. There is a function in here that is called truncate. It's called trunk. Let me go all the way down here. So you can see here it is. And all it does is it truncates and leaves the integer part of any value. So if I give this a value of 500.72, the return, once I put the 500.72 in here, is going to be just 500. It's, the, it's not the opposite, but you, we could also do another function here, which is round, which would always return also an integer value, uh, but round will either go up or down. Now, in our case, we're always going to get a 0.5 because it's either an even or an odd answer. So round would just give us the, the higher value instead of the lower value. So instead of returning back 500, it could return 501. We'll basically pick. It doesn't matter. I like trunk because we're just removing the, here's the, where's round? There's round. Uh, I like trunk because we're just removing the fractional bit and we just end up with an integer number. So if we wanted to improve our statement here, you see it's going to get very long because we keep adding things, and I'll show you how to pretty, pretty this up. But we can just truncate here, and that way we will avoid the problem of fractional answers. That will basically make this work on any image that we give it. So now we have almost everything we need, but there's one more clever part. To get to the clever part, though, I want to clean up our expression by using a variable to hold all of this stuff right here. 
this is basically defining uh, the center x, you know, uh, halfway point in the image, and this is going to be half of the uh, height of the image. So we can make this a variable. I'm just going to copy this. We can make it a variable, which is nice. So I can call this x and c for center or halfway or I don't know, I'm just giving it a name. And it's going to equal to that expression. So that means that here we can just put xc like that. That's so much prettier. And then, of course, we can do the same thing with a yc equals this. And then we can put a yc here. But let me clean up a couple of other things here. First is that you'll notice now I'm using an equal sign. That's because I'm assigning a value. This isn't comparing anything. Instead, I'm assigning xc equals this number and yc equals this number. When you have multiple lines, you put little semicolons here. And uh, this, will, uh, this will make no change. The, what I've done here will work, except that I need to tell pixel math, hey, this is a variable. This xc thing is actually a variable that holds information. What you do is you add it here to the symbols area, say xc, yc, like this. And in that way, pixel math knows that that is a, um, a variable that you're using. So let's make sure this works. If I undo and then I redo, well, yeah, let's just redo. And it does, it works. So that, that's a good sign. Another way to be sure, of course, that at least you typed in things correctly. Let's say that I didn't have this here. I am definitely going to get an error. But one way to know that I'm going to get an error is if you go into the expression editor and after you've typed stuff, if you forgot a parentheses or you didn't have the semicolon or all that stuff, if you try to parse your statements, it'll say that there's something wrong. You might not even know that, what that means, expected an L value operand, you know, whatever. That may or may not make a whole lot of sense. But it is telling me there's something wrong. And what is wrong in this case is that I didn't give it this. Now if I parse, it's going to go each line and says, yeah, everything makes sense and the world is in order, so it'll do what we've asked it to do, which may or may not be correct, but the syntax, syntactically what we've typed, is correct. Basically, it's like it compiled or something. Now, getting back to the problem at hand, and this is the kind of the clever part, the clever part is that we want the plus, perhaps, in general, not to go across the whole image, but to be any particular size that we want. So, I'm going to put another variable here. I'm going to call it size. I'm going to say equals. And let's just, thinking ahead here, specify a size that we might want our, our crosshairs to be. Maybe there are 100 pixels. They could be 50 pixels. Whatever it is. I'm going to make it 100. Really visible. So, that's going to be a size. And I'm just going to copy what we have here because I need to demonstrate something. I am going to take advantage of a function in rec. This is yet another function. I haven't shown it to you yet, but it's the last function that I need. In rec tests to know whether, if you specify a rectangle in your image, anywhere in your image, you just specify uh, the, um, the origin of your rectangle, where it begins and ends, and then you specify the width and the height of this rectangle, this will return an answer of true or false whether you are inside of it or not as you raster across the image. This just lets you know. Are you in the rectangle that you uh, specified? And that can be useful here because let's just pretend I make a rectangle around this crosshair that I've shown. What I can do is I can specify only if I'm inside my rectangle, draw the crosshair. If you're, you can draw these lines, but only draw these lines if you're inside. If you're not inside the rectangle, even though that might be true to draw the line, you don't. So we have another condition. Not only is the x position going to equal to halfway across and the y position is going to equal halfway across, but also you need to be inside the box. That's what allows us, and we can specify any box size, that's what's going to allow us to have a larger or smaller crosshairs. So that's kind of the answer uh, to the problem. It's using in rec. What I'm going to do is in the 
if statement here. I'm going to say in rec, and then I'm going to specify, you know, basically uh, the position which we might expect to be xc and yc, because those are going to be the, the halfway points, which is the center, right? And then we would say size, comma, size. So we have this statement here. If we're inside the rectangle, and we already know we need this stuff to be true as well, so we literally put that and. Now I'm just going to put parentheses here to make it really clear. So if this is true and this is true, then draw a one. Uh, then draw, um, light up the pixel with one. Otherwise, don't. Just keep it zero. But, and this is the part that I'm going to erase this now. I'm just going to cut. I need to show you how in rec works. So I'm going to do that with uh, being specific here in my picture. So if in rec, and we're going to say, um, let's say it's the center of this frame. So this frame might be 500, 500, right? And let's do the 100 for the size. That's the width and the height of our rectangle. If it's in the rectangle, make it a 1. Otherwise, make it a 0. Let me remove this preview. We don't need that. And I'll take a step back here. OK, so we have our blank image. And all I'm saying is draw a rectangle if we're inside. Because if we're inside, it's going to light it up. If we're not inside, nothing's going to happen. And there it is. But here's the part that, uh, if you didn't know, it would sure be very important to know, which is that the rectangle, what these coordinates refer to, is the top left corner of the rectangle. You'll see here that the top left corner, well, that's our 500 point right there. And then you get the statement either being true or false. So this is the origin of the image, is the top left corner, if I use in rec just like it is right now. And so now I can demonstrate what the problem is. You remember here is the thing that's supposed to do the job where only if those two conditions are met, watch what happens. Ah, I made a mistake. Let's see what I did. Of course, I did the thing that uh, I forgot to put size here because it's my new variable. There's my variable size. OK, let's try this again. Goodness grief. And I also need my, this is what happens when you do things fast. What you get is not a full plus. That was the point I was going to make. Because this condition is correct, but it starts at that origin point, and then goes to the right, and then it goes down, of course. So we're not getting the full dimension of our plus sign. Uh, so what we really wanted to have happen is we want our rectangle not to start here, but we want the center of our rectangle to be at the origin. So in other words, the center of our rectangle is uh, positive x and positive y too much. That's the center position. So what we need to do is whatever size we say our crosshairs are, we need to go half that back to place the origin right in the middle, so our crosshair will be right in the middle. And all we then do is we take whatever position here we specified for uh, the, the middle, and we just subtract half of the size that we specify here. And that's going to put the crosshair in the middle. That was the part that I wanted to demonstrate here. So that now we have crosshairs that show up right in the center. So it's lined up here on 500, 500. And it will work out on any image that we point at because we're protecting it with our little truncation thing here. If we wanted a larger little crosshair, we can put in some larger value here. And then it makes a bigger crosshair, and so on. Now, the way that I think that the person intended to use this was to put crosshairs on all of the images that he wanted to blink. So, uh, here's a real image, right? 
And if we wanted to know where the center of this image was so we can blink it with other images or something like that, we could literally draw, which is what he wanted to do, the crosshairs on here. But when we do it, we're going to need to change one thing. Let me make this bigger so the whole expression fits. It's this. We don't, what we want to do is draw white when all of these conditions are met, but otherwise leave whatever pixel value we're currently on in this image alone. And that means we need to put here target T. So either make it one or make it the same as it already was, which is don't change it. That should put our crosshairs right here on the image. So now we know where the center of this image is. And if we used an image container, we could put little crosshairs on all images that we had opened or, or that we were working on, whatever it is that we wanted to do. So that's the final answer. And this expression then, I will copy to, I'll put right in the, on the same page that you're looking at as you are watching this video. Just remember you have the expression, you also need to put in the symbols here so it will work for you. And if you ever, I guess if you ever need uh, crosshairs for your images or something, you can uh, use this expression. But the important point of this demonstration is that everything I just showed, the use of, you know, parentheses, the ands and the ors, the use of variables, all of that, it, in one little demonstration, it basically encompasses a very large fraction of the universe of using PixInsight. If you understand all of these little adjustments, now this looks like maybe a complex expression, but it started small, small little bits, and then we built it up to be the, the final version that we wanted. And I think that that is the way to learn how to use pixel math so that it's not scary. Start small, we just made a vertical line, we made a horizontal line, and then we built it up with there with conditions and uh, clever ways of uh, you know, specifying sizes and so on. And then you have the result that you're looking for. So consider using pixel math as a great tool to solve some problem that you need solved because there may not be an explicit process in PixInsight that does the job. There is no crosshairs in PixInsight. But now with this pixel math expression, there is. Have fun.